Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of the IOP tutorial video. It's been a little while since I uploaded last time, I had a whole lot of unity to do and the SSD on my computer also died, so I've had to rebuild my project from scratch, but we're finally back and we are ready to go. Before we get stuck into this video though, I just wanted to let you guys know that I've created a Discord server now, so if you have any questions or you want to join the community, uh, please feel free to obviously leave them in the comments but also come and join and you can chat with me directly here. It's very early days, so obviously we're looking to grow the community as much as we possibly can. I've also just set up a Patreon page. I'll be looking to post a whole lot of extra content in here and a bunch of perks for my Patreon. So if that interests you, please check that out. All right, let's get into the video. So from where we left off last time, there's a few minor changes I made to the project when I rebuilt this. The first one being that I've made my company name Flavane and I've made my product name Unity IAP Tutorial. And in the IAP catalog, I've made the ID all lowercase. And that's for both IDs. And the reason why we did that is because we are going to be creating an export here. So if I go to App Store Export and I make sure I get my Google Play CSV, I'm just going to save this down on my desktop and I can keep it with the name that it has. Hit save. And if I open that one up, you can see it's just presented in the format that the Google Play Store accepts. So we'll be able to import our products directly from here. It'll save us having to rewrite them later on. The next step that we're going to be doing is we're going to be jumping into the Google Play Store developer console. Now, if you don't have this, I'll put a link in the description. If it's your first time ever publishing anything, there will be, I think Google does an $80 or so lifetime fee set up to create an account. Um, but if you already have that, you can see I have a graveyard of a bunch of different apps that I've made. But we are going to be starting from scratch for this. So I'm going to go up the top right and click Create App. And I am going to call this Unity IAP Tutorial. It is a game. It's free. And just have to accept some terms and conditions and hit Create App. So this will take you straight to the dashboard. I'm not going to be taking you through how to set up a full app from scratch to get it published because there are quite a lot of steps in there and it is a bit unnecessary for this video. What we're going to be doing instead in this video is just doing the minimum amount to get something published so that we can then review to make sure IAP stuff's working. So that's going to be done by going to testing, internal testing, and setting up some testers. In my case, I already have two testing units which I'll be selecting but you can just create a new group of testers by adding an email list, add a name to that list, and then add some email addresses, and that's it. It does also let you upload a CSV, but really, if you're just adding yourself as a tester to test this out, then you can just type your email address here. In my case, I'm just gonna be using the list I've already got called Ryan, which just has my email addresses in it. And then we're gonna go back to releases. Now we're gonna be creating a new release here inside of our internal testing area. And what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to call this Unity IAP Tutorial, and I'll just call this V1. I won't worry about that, that's just the release notes that get sent with it. But we are now going to need to create an AAB file. So we're going to be jumping back into Unity, and we're going to go into our build settings again. And we're going to need to change our build file to be an AAB, which is done by ticking this box here. If this box isn't ticked, what you'll find is you'll be outputting a .apk file, which is an install that you can put directly on a phone, but it's not something that the developer console accepts anymore. So this, building with this, will make it build as a .aab file, which is what Google will accept. Inside of player settings, so we're going to be going down to our publishing settings, and in this key store manager, I'm going to be creating a brand new key store. So I'm just going to go create new and anywhere, and I might just make a folder here called key store. And this can just be called Flavane. Okay, so what this is, is we're gonna be signing our application with a registered key so that every time Google Play receives a new version of our app, it's gonna know who we are because we've signed it with this key. So this key identifies us as the, as the owner of this application. It's very important if you're creating this and you're going to be pushing this to production that you keep this key store safe because creating a new key store for an application generally means creating a second version of the application uh, on the app store, which is a pain because it's actually a separate listing. So keep this one very, very secure, very safe. Keep a backup of it. Um, very, very important. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'm just going to call this my password it can just be password 
alias can just be Flavin. Again, I'll set the password to password. We can leave validity at 99, uh, 50 years. And I won't worry about anything else there. I'm just going to hit add key. It's just saying we've created it. Do we want to use it in this project? I'll say yes. So you can see it here, it's selected custom key and then it's found the path that I just created. It's inserted my passwords for me already and it's using the alias that I created, Flavane. Now there's one other thing that we're gonna to need to set for it to accept our AAV file and that is in other settings. And down where it says scripting backend, we're gonna be changing this to IL2CPP and that enables us to upload a ARM64 version of the file. I'm gonna take that there. This is important, uh, Google doesn't allow just ARM v7 anymore, it needs a 64 version as well. So we use that IL2 CPP to enable us to do that. Now I can go back into my build settings and I can build this AAB file. I'm just gonna create in here a folder called versions and I'll just call this tutorial version one. Okay, so that is finished building and it is a .aab file as Google requested. So we are going to do an upload here and I'm going to be uploading that file right there. This will take a minute. Excellent, so that one has uploaded for me and we are ready to go. Now just note here that if you do get an error saying something like your API level here is not high enough, it needs to be higher. I do have a separate video and I will link that up the top right of the screen now. It's just a simple update, but there's a few extra steps in there and I don't really want to cover that in this one here. So I'm going to hit save. And now it says it's ready for release. So we're going to review the release. So apparently we need to let Google know whether our app is for COVID-19 contact tracing, which it isn't. Uh, so we're going to scroll down to the bottom here where we've got this policy section, app content. And I believe it's at the very bottom of this, contact tracing app status. My app is publicly available. My app is not a publicly available contact tracing. So we'll save that. We'll jump back into internal testing. Our release should be here. Yep, so we're just gonna hit edit release. We can skip past this screen again. And now we no longer have that error message, so we are fine to start rolling out. So I'm just gonna click here, start rollout, rollout. And I just need to make sure that in my tester section, I actually have this ticked. I didn't have this ticked before, but we just need to make sure that we actually do tick the list of testers here. So we're gonna hit save changes. So now that we've released a version of this to our testers, we are going to then go down to the bottom here on the left-hand side, monetize, and we're gonna go in-app products. And at the start of this, we exported a file to our desktop. So that was this Google Play CSV. I'm just gonna go here, I'm gonna import, and we're gonna grab that file now. So on my desktop, grab this, and you can see that it's loaded. So I'm gonna click import. And now we have our products here. You could also set this up manually here uh, if you wanted to add some extra ones. But to be honest, I would say for consistency sake, you always want to be going through here and exporting this because then you know that Unity is always going to match what you've got in your uh, app store through Google Play. So now we can see that our app release is set to active and that it's got a temporary name. That's just because it hasn't yet been reviewed and we also haven't filled out all the information that we need for it to be reviewed properly. But if you want users to test, Google should send them an email uh, with an invite asking them to download the game. If they don't get one though, you can go to this little testers area, scroll down to the bottom, and you can just copy a link here. This link will take them to a page where they can basically accept an invite to join. I'm already a part of this, but if you click accept invite, it will then give you the option to download it on Google Play take you to Google Play and I've got it installed currently, but you would then just be able to install it like a normal app. So I just wanted to demonstrate the last part of this, which is using this app on your phone and showing that it works. So I ended up sending this to myself and when I open it up, I've joined the program, but I'm going to download it on Google Play. I'll hit install. It's finished installing, hit open, and I'll just flick this sideways so it looks a little better. I can see I've got my game here. If I hit this purchase button, it brings up the full purchase and you have some options here with this test card. You can choose to have it approved or choose to have it declined just to
do that sort of testing. I'm just gonna keep it with prove and one tap buy and the payment successful. Just jumping back into my inbox as well, I can also see that it sent me an email to say that I've purchased this here for 99 cents and that it was done with my test account. And it's just good so it shows really everything that you need to know are fully integrated and all working. And that's it for this video guys. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Flubase Faffy for supporting me on Patreon. And also just to remind you all that we have the Discord. Please feel free to join. Uh, let's fill up the community and let's get some questions flowing. Thanks guys, see you in the next video.